Roaming is one of the things I see newer players struggle with the most, whether it be over peaking or just not understanding how to roam effectively. Today I'll be teaching you how to roam on defense so you can delay the attacker's push and ruin their drone economy. Let's cut off the nonsense and get straight into it. First things first, what is roaming? Roaming is technically anyone who doesn't spend a majority of the round in sight. They typically will be the first sort of obstacle for attackers to deal with. Attackers will typically want to drone all roamers out and kill them before they can get the opportunity to flank. There isn't really a set amount of roamers you should have in any given round. Depending on the site and the map, the acceptable amount of roamers varies significantly. However, as a general rule, you want to have somewhere between two to three roamers in any given match. You don't want to have too many anchors on site because that will allow the attackers to put their full focus on the site. This is why roaming is really important. Without it, attackers have a really easy time just focusing on site and pushing it without having to worry about flanks. So they can basically just breach all the walls and floors to force defenders into cross fires and pick them off one by one however if you invest too much in roamers and only have like one anchor on site then the attackers will just figure that out through droning and just five man rush the bomb site if you don't have the right amount of roamers or you don't play it properly it can single-handedly lose you rounds there's two types of roaming in rainbow six siege the first one being shallow roaming shallow roaming is when you are roaming relatively close to the bomb site and holding a crucial position some good examples of this can include library when you are playing the gaming bomb site on chalet or sunrise on coastline both of these are extremely crucial to hold on to having control of these areas can delay the attackers significantly one of the strongest parts about these roams is that it is extremely easy to rotate back to site safely library you can easily drop through one of the hatches or rotate by one of the two staircases nearby and sunrise you can make a rotate using impact grenades that can allow you to leave quickly or just fall back to site through sunrise door now trust me not every shallow roam is good you have to choose the right location if you just shut up a shallow roam on a location that is unimportant to the attacking team or in an area that is unsafe it can be a waste of time an example of a bad location would be CCTV on border. To successfully hold CC, you will need a lot of resources that will be taken away from site. And while this is an important position for the attackers, it's not worth the resources and the risk of you dying early. The main goal of a roamer is to burn as much time as humanly possible. So if you put yourself in a position that isn't optimal for survival, then you are setting yourself up for failure. The second type of roaming, which in my experience is the most difficult for new players, is called deep roaming. Deep roaming is when you are not close to site at all and rotating back will take a while. This kind of roaming is still super important but can easily be done incorrectly. The reason deep roaming is so difficult is because you have to understand where to roam and when to fall back. A common misconception about not just deep roaming but roaming in general is that you should just sit in a corner and wait to flank the enemy when they aren't looking. And while this may work at lower ranks where mis droning is prevalent, once you get into plat or higher, this won't work anymore. Majority of teams will just drone you out and box you in and kill you the true way to deep roam is to roam in a place where the attackers are normally looking to start their initial push some great examples of this are construction on clubhouse when you are playing church or cigar when you are playing kitchen on cafe the reason why these roams are so strong is because they force the attackers to deal with you if the attackers want to get the hatches on clubhouse they have to drone you out in construction and kill you because if they don't they know you will likely flank them with construction specifically, you can easily fall back if needed through construction hatch itself or any of the three staircases. With cigar on cafe, the same applies. The attackers can't play vertically without clearing you, and if you notice the attackers aren't going for vertical play, you can easily rotate back through hatch or through the multiple stairs and drop downs. Another way you can deep roam is by playing below the bomb site to punish attackers once they push site. This can be done with operators like Pulse and Valkyrie. A great bomb site to do this is on armory lockers on border. You can roam and serve on the site and be able to instantly nitro a planter anywhere in sight basically this kind of deep roam is extremely dependent on the map some maps don't have many destructible floors and so obviously on those maps this strap won't be applicable also i see a lot of people who utilize this roaming strategy where you roam below the bomb site will watch as their anchors start to die but will hold their ground while this will get you a free kill a lot of the time if your anchors are saying they need help you should probably just go back to site now i know what you are likely asking what is the point of roaming and this is where a lot of players are wrong a majority of the player base thinks that roamers are meant to get kills this is a side effect of a lot of roamers having good guns at high speed however this is quite the opposite roamers are actually meant to burn out the clock and waste the attacker's drone economy kills are just secondary you don't want to be that guy that tries to get an early kill and dies because they overpeaked you need to focus on holding your ground for as long as you can 
If you feel as though you're going to die soon if you keep holding your position, that's when you should finally rotate. A good example of this is roaming top floor and clubhouse. If you are playing in construction here, and there is attackers on con window and master, you can still hold your ground. Where things become an issue is if one of these walls are breached or they send someone to push you from behind. This is when you should rotate. Knowing when to fall back is one of the most important skills of roaming, and this will just come with time. The more you roam, the better you'll get at gauging when to fall back. Once again, if you are roaming in construction while you are on the church bomb site and the anchors are calling out that they are pushing blue and dirt, you should likely reposition to somewhere else. A good place to reposition would be garage for flank or lounge to stop attackers from leaving secret. In short, as a roamer, you should be solely focused on wasting time. Learn when to retreat, when to hold your ground, and when to reposition. All of these are extremely important skills that you need to master, and that'll just come with time. I can't really give you a guide on when to rotate and when to hold your ground because that's dependent on the situation. Now, if you want to roam, who should you choose? There are so many operators in Rainbow Six Siege right now, and this decision can be really difficult. I personally would recommend Jaeger for having one of the strongest gadgets in the game and a solid gun. Mozzie for his ability to set up his gadget in the areas he's holding to further inhibit the attacker's drone play, and his access to solid guns and a nitro cell. Vigil, I would choose for a similar reason. His gadget allows him to completely ignore drones and he has an excellent gun with impacts on top of it. His only issue is that he doesn't bring any utility to the team. However, a really well coordinated Mozzie and Visual Roam together can be an extreme challenge to clear. Alibi is another obvious pick right now in the current meta. She has one of the best guns on defense, a deployable shield, and a decent gadget. Thorn is in a similar boat as Alibi. She also has a really good gun, deployable shield, and a pretty strong gadget. Some more good operators to roam with include Valk, Castle, Mute, or Azami. Any of these operators will get the job done. I promise you if you stop focusing on getting kills and focus more on wasting the attacker's time, you'll notice you are winning a lot more rounds. Just try to be a huge annoyance for the attackers. Force them into dealing with you, and when they do, make them waste a lot of time to do so. Don't overpeak and make for sure you know when to fall back to preserve your life. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to roam in Rainbow Six Siege. I've been pretty busy with college recently, so this video took a little longer for me to make than expected, and I apologize for that. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot if you could consider subscribing. Currently only 1% of you are subbed, I'm trying to make that climb to 10k, and your sub will help a ton. And if I haven't earned your sub yet, you can go and watch this video, which is my beginner's guide to Rainbow Six Siege. And anyways, I'll see you next time friends, peace.